praise the Lord. He's a king of glory. Clap your hands. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. He's a great king over all the earth. The king has brought us, deployed us on Boston, Massachusetts for the World Series, 2018 Amen. World Series Parade. We're going to draw millions in the streets here. Uh, Brother Ryan has going to be a forerunner here earlier this year to plow a lot of the games, to prepare the way. Found us a great parking spot with Battle Van there. Getting all the equipment out of the van, getting ready to deploy on it. Um, it's going to be a few hours of just uh, gospel barrage on the place. A lot of Roman Catholicism. It, it's a 501st anniversary of the, of the Protestant Reformation today on 1031. What a, what a blessing. It's a historical time. It is a God-ordained time to send his people in here to, to, to plow this thing like a field and to call it a sheep. Um, may it be reformed. Many, many false religious systems here today, especially Romanism here, running rampant. So we must exalt the true and living God, the one true Christ, the one-time sacrifice of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together for he is the King of Kings, the glorious, victorious King of glory. Bless his holy name. Jesus, the glorious, victorious King of glory. Bless his holy name. Jesus, as a battle song. Hallelujah. Ashes would be about worshiping the one true God to give you breath in your lungs and a pulse. Everything you have comes from the Lord. And you're going to want to worship God. You'll be more excited about Jesus than everything else when you're born again. That's the great news of this gospel. So he says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as witness to all the nations. Then the end will come. Oh, get, get this one here too, guys. You're going to spend time reading that word. So the issue is perfection. You've got to be perfect or your soul's damned. God's requirement. You've got to obey and thought word indeed. No one can do that. That's why everybody dies. Everybody rots. And we're under condemnation. Jesus lived perfectly. Jesus died innocently for the guilty on the cross to pay the penalty for sin. There's no more sacrifices. He's a one-time sacrifice to pacify God's wrath. That is a demonstration of God's love. Apart from him, you're under God's judgment. The holy anger of God is turned toward you. It will consume you in the fires of hell. God commands you to repent and to believe in the gospel. Because he is the eternal son of God. For of him and to him and through him are all things to whom belong the glory forever and ever. And the heavens declare the glory of God. His invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. But because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful. It became useless, futile in their thoughts, and their fullest hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. We can see some of the resemblance of that in the mascot worship of the world today. The sports idolatry of the world today. We put everything before God, love everything more than God, and we're heaping up great condemnation upon ourselves. In this condition, naturally, you're born in sin. You're an enemy of God. That's why you must be born again. You need Christ. You're not okay. You're in great danger of ruthless judgment. It is by grace that one is saved through faith, that not of ourselves, a gift of God, not of works, as anyone should boast. So we must understand that we've done nothing but earn eternal damnation in the lake of fire. We've earned uh, judgment for our personal crimes against God and thought, word, and deed. That's why we're dying physically. The wages of sin is death. The body dies, decays to dust. Second death will be burning in everlasting conscious torment in unquenchable fire. So you need a savior to save you from your sins and the ruthless judgment of God. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So consider our ways today. We're not worried about what team you're a fan of. It's the eternal condition of your soul. Because your sin, the Lord's hand is not sure that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hid his face from you so that he will not hear. Our hands are defiled with blood, our fingers with iniquity. But we are evil internally to the courts, while you need to wash in the blood of the Lamb, to be cleansed of all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, to be reconciled to God. You can't do it by your own works, by any means. Jesus came into the world to live the perfect sinless life required by God. It's perfection. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Today we celebrate the 501st anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. 
But Martin Luther came out of the Roman cult and was brought back to the doctrines of grace, the doctrines of Christ, to reform the church. And the Lord ordained that work and the biblical gospel being preached again. And as it gets, all of grace, not of any work at all. And that's freedom for freedom for the sinner. To be set free, Jesus came to set the captives free, to save his people from their sins. He said, I came out to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. It is repentance towards God, a godly sorrow from the heart that produces repentance leading to salvation. And all the evil you've done, your idol worship, everything else but God, you personally are, are an idol. You, you do evil before God. You practice lawlessness, continually violating the commandments of God and doing your own will. That way it leads to death. It seems right, but it ends up in death. Jesus came to live and die for his people's sins. And so in Christ, you'll be accounted righteous by faith. You need Jesus to deliver you from the curse of divine law, the curse of sin. God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Without Jesus, you seek to establish your own righteousness. You, see, you seek to do your own will. And that way leads to eternal destruction. Jesus said you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And you're not born again by religious works. You're not born again by infant baptism. The Roman Catholic called us an abomination to the Lord and every other religious system in the world. Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that which is lost. The Lord Jesus suffered once for sins forever, then sat down at the right hand of God. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Christ suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust to bring us to God. He was put to death in the flesh, made alive in the spirit. You're in great days of perilous times. Days of Antichrist, days of destruction ahead in your nation. And you need to return to the living God before it's too late. Naturally, in Adam, the natural state of Adam, man is at enmity with God, a vessel of God's wrath, and fitted to destruction. Which how will you escape if you neglect so great a salvation, which first was spoken unto us by the Lord? Yeah, Red Sox. How will you escape today the wrath of God? If you're to die in this state, the Bible says, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So today, are you suppressing the truth of God, changing the truth of God into lies? Or are we serving God, taking his word for what it is, obeying God's word? Today, what are we doing with Christ? What are you doing with Christ today? Have you been born again of the incorruptible seed of Christ? He says, you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. But if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. Are you denying Christ? You know, God does not care about your sports team. He cares about your heart condition today. Where will you spend eternity? It is heaven or hell today. Before a just and holy God, it is heaven or hell. And the Bible says we must all give an account. And the Bible says we'll be judged according to our works, according to what we've done here on this earth. Today, you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. An evil mouth and a forward tongue do I hate, he said. Today, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, is to hate sin and love righteousness. You don't realize how sick you really are, you're not going to see the need of a cure. you got a disease worse than AIDS. In turn, your sin's going to rot your body and damn your soul. Worse than any type of cancer. It's called sin, it's real simple. You're a sinner, you're dying, you're going to die. You are going to die, the body is going to rot because of sin, and you will stand before God be judged. You don't want to meet God as your judge. That's why you need a savior. That's why Christ came, to live for sinners, to obey for sinners, to suffer and die for sinners, and take the wrath of God and the penalty and the holy justice of God upon himself, so that in Christ you be accounted righteous and be healed. It's by his stripes we'll be healed. When we understand that, we'll be much more passionate about anything else, about God, than everything else on the earth. When you understand what God has done to save his people from their sins, to reconcile sinners to himself through Jesus Christ, your life is radically transformed because you get the faith of Christ. The just shall live by faith. So God commands you to repent and believe the gospel. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and the end will come. Jesus is coming again to destroy the nations, to kill all of his enemies. He's coming to slaughter every human being on the earth. He's not in love with anybody on the earth outside of his covenant. You understand that. He's merciful and gracious, slow to anger and of great kindness. But the day of the Lord comes, cruel, 
with both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate. He will destroy the sinners who are out of it. Flee from the wrath to come. Return to the living God today. For now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Wail for the day of the Lord is at hand. It comes as a destruction of the Almighty. He says that the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And those who forsake the Lord shall be consumed. If he's, if he's truly saved you, he's Lord of your life, and you're going to follow him and do his will. He says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. There's one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. But there is a way that seems right to a man, the end thereof are the ways of death. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, the Lord weighs the hearts. God knows the secrets of the heart. For the Lord God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He said, if the word spoken through angels prove steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed by those who heard him, God also bearing witnesses, signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. How will you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? Now, outside of Christ, you're an enemy of God. He is a holy God. And all have sinned against him. Everyone is guilty before him. Every mouth is stopped. Your conscience bears witness of your guilt and the crimes you committed before a holy God. You know that. Every time you dishonored your parents, every time you lied, every time you cheated on a test, cursed out of your mouth, committed some filthy, perverse thing in your heart, worshipped another idol, like we're, many of us are magnifying and uh, worshipping an idol today over God. There's all kinds of different crimes against God. His standard is perfection. No one can meet that standard, and because of that, you are damned. That's why you need Christ. Jesus came to save sinners by doing the will of God. You're going to die from your disease. Your disease is going to rot your body to dust. It will ultimately damn you to eternal fire with the devil and his angels. That disease must be cured. That disease is sin, worse than any type of cancer, worse than AIDS. You can get healed of anything here. If you die in your sins, you burn the devil's hell. You must be cured of your disease. The only cure is the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish, without spot. That's why they call the Lord Jesus Christ the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And through his atoning death, because Jesus lived perfectly, Christ suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust to bring us to God. He took the penalty for sin on the cross. His blood was shed once and for all for the remission of sins. God raised him from the dead. He sat down at the right hand of God to rule the universe, coming again to destroy the world and the nations and all of his enemies, coming to kill the second time he comes. He came the first time to be killed. He was crucified in weakness, and he lived by the power of God. He died to save his people from their sins, so that their sins would be taken away the moment they believe, and you'd be accounted righteous before God. But unless you repent, you will perish. So, so the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That Jesus suffered once for sins, Are you guys like the just the for the unjust. No, we're born again. We're Christians, okay? You become a Christian when you're born again, when you become a child of God through faith alone in Jesus Christ. It's it's all about grace, that God sent Jesus, the only type of Christian that there is. A, a true Christian is one who's born of God, who is trusted in Jesus Christ alone, who's passed from death to life. Because we cannot be made right with God by any work or any legal requirements. We're all guilty before God, right? So we can't be brought back to God by go we can't we, we no we can't be we can't be brought back to God. Uh Seattle. 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 Came all the way to well, we go all over. <laughs> They're from like down there. Yeah, that place, place, place is terrible place. Like terrible place. Um, <laughs> well, we love the nature and the weather out there, but I mean the way nature. Yo, you're it's a glorious uh, environment. Don't get. Yeah, doesn't get that cold here, but make sure this it's all about it, it when Christ did it all. He paid the penalty in full for sin. I know, but the come to Christ. Well, aren't Protestants Christians? Christians? What's that? Like Protestants aren't they Christians? Yeah, if they're born again. So we're gonna protest the false every false way of sin. Well, if they're not born again, they're not a real Christian. What does that mean, born again? Protest means you we, we protest every false way that contradicts the Bible. So that's what you gotta see a Protestant, if they're true biblically 
biblical Christians, they, they, they have the life of Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes. Again, well, it's a supernatural work of God. That God actually regenerates your nature and dwells inside of you by His Spirit. You become a temple of God. Because Christ lives in you. I don't understand that either. Well, I gotta go. Well, read this. Okay, I'll, seek I'll, the Lord. I'll read the book that. of John in the Bible. All right. God's doing a great work there. I know. Sin. The Bible says you're born into sin, shape and iniquity. The Bible says the wicked are estranged from the womb as soon as they're born, speaking lies. So today you need a new nature. You need to be born again of the incorruptible seed of Christ. Today turn to the Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned to hell in all the nations that forget God. Today you forget your maker, you deny your maker Jesus Christ, you'll be turning to hell. The Bible says hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of men are never satisfied. That he that would sin would only wrong his own soul. Only that hate me, he says, love death. So we we hate God when we sin against God. We're showing that we don't want to serve God, we want to serve our own lusts. The Bible says, love not this world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He said, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, these things are not of the Father, but are of the world. He says, therefore, is the condemnation. Light has come into the world, folks. The light of Jesus Christ, he is the light today. He is the Savior. The Bible says, I, he is the good shepherd. He gives life to his sheep, his people today. So today, turn from your sin and turn to the Savior. The Bible says, unless a man is born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Today, serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Bow to your maker or be consumed in everlasting torment in hell. The Bible says, in flaming fire, he will take vengeance on those that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, they'll be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Oh, folks, the Bible says destruction and misery are in your ways. That's what the Bible says. Naturally, that is what's in men's heart. Destructive ways before God because of their sin nature in Adam. The Bible says in Adam they'll die, but even so in Christ all will be made alive. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. By another one's obedience, many will be made righteous. So we need the righteousness of Christ to be set free from your unrighteousness to be washed by the Lamb of God and that takes away the sins of the world. The Bible says Jesus Christ, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is as a lamb that went to the slaughter and a sheep before his shears was dumb. He was, Jesus Christ was. The Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has turned to his own way and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So we need to be cleansed from our iniquities. And the Bible says once we're cleansed, he says under the pure, all things are pure. But undefiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. For even their mind and their conscience is defiled. So we deny him, he will deny us, the Bible says. He says, he that believes on the Son has life. He that believes not in the Son does not have life. But the wrath of God abides upon him. The Bible says the wrath of God is abiding upon your life today. Turn from your sin and turn to the Savior. He says, hell has enlarged itself and opened its mouth beyond measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he who rejoices shall descend into it. That the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations forget God. You don't realize the danger that you're really in. You may be feeling great today, but you're apart from Christ and the wrath of God abides upon you. Get in the word of God. You must be born again. Your religions will damn your souls. Come to Christ. The gift of God is eternal. Jesus paid it all. You need the life of Christ. He says, God will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. The day of the Lord is coming. The Bible says it's burning like an oven when all the ground. Yes, all. He loves all those who are in Christ. He become a Jew inwardly. He says, outside of Christ, we're dead in trespass and sins. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The redeeming blood of Christ was shed on the cross once and for all. He sat down at the right hand of God. That in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It is by grace that we are saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. The proud in heart are an abomination of the Lord. And he says, pride comes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Come to Christ 
to be saved from the wrath of God. Jesus said you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God, and there's nothing you can do to earn a right standing with God. We are born in sin from the first man's original sin. We break God's commandments. God has given you a conscience and a right from wrong by the laws and knowledge of sin, and so we know that we're guilty. That's why we die physically. Everyone is dying from the same disease. The body rots to dust. The second death will be burning in the lake of fire in conscious torment under the wrath of God. Jesus, God the Son, came to suffer and die on the cross to pay the penalty for sin, to save us from the wrath to come. You must come to Him. You must trust in Him alone or you'll be destroyed. Flee from the wrath to come. Repent and believe the gospel. It says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. The Lord is a true God. He is a living God and the everlasting King, and His wrath the earth will tremble, and the nations will not be able to endure His indignation. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So He says, Fear God, and depart from evil to be helped through flesh and strike your bones. For what does it profit a man if he gains? The whole world, he loses his own soul. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Naked you came in the world, naked you're going to go out. For dust you are, dust you shall return. He says, this, We are all cursed under the law of God for breaking the commands of God and need to be saved. God has provided the care. God has provided the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came in the flesh. He did the will of God. He obeyed in the death, even the death of the cross. He will deliver you from every evil work and the power of Satan and sin. Jesus said you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. God destroys all who forsake him. He will say on that day, bring here those enemies of mine who do not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. The only hope for you or anybody in the world is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, his blood shed on the cross for the remission of sins because atonement had to be made. Justice had to be satisfied. God is just. He'll by no means clear the guilty. Every person is guilty before God. There's none who does good. No, not one. The Bible says the things that are highly esteemed among men are an abomination to the Lord, that your nature is corrupt, that mankind is abominable and filthy, and you drink iniquity like water. You know you be sinned against the Holy God because we are dying physically. If you were a good person, you'd live forever. That's not the case. The wages of sin is death. And the first death is in the body, the second death will be burning in conscious torment in the lake. He was the man of sorrows. Jesus Christ suffered. Jesus Christ suffered and bled and died at the cross for the sake of sinners. But they turn from your sin and turn to the Savior. Turn from your sin and turn to the Savior. Folks, the end result of a life in sin is destruction. He says destruction and misery are in their ways. Destruction and misery are in their ways. They need a new nature, a new way. Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the only hope today. Turn from your abominations. Turn from your sinful ways and turn to the Savior. But bowing to idols, the Bible says, every God other than Christ is an idol. But the Lord, He made the heavens. He made heaven and earth. He is the God who is to be worshipped today. But bowing to men and bow to your Creator. Bow to the Maker that has given you air to breathe today. Jesus Christ is your only hope. The Bible says, but as many as received Him, to them He gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Folks, if you do not have Christ today, you're on your way to hell. He says, turn any religious person today, such as the scribes, the Pharisees, he says they are twofold sons of hell because of the religious deeds. They that they can be righteous without the righteousness of Christ. Folks, you have no righteousness in you. You need the righteousness of Christ. He says outwardly they will appear righteous unto men, but inwardly they are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So we need a new nature to be set free from our hypocrisy and our iniquity through Christ and in Christ alone. Through Christ and in Christ alone, by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. So God will judge the world in righteousness by that man who he has appointed, he's ordained, his own son to judge the world in perfect righteousness, perfect righteous judgment. And the Bible says if your name does not appear in the book of life, you'll be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. He says they'll be cast into the lake of fire which is the second death. He says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Folks, you understand this today. Those who practice sin, the end result of the sin, he says be sure that your sin will find you out. Be sure the end result of your sin is eternal punishment from an eternal God who hates sin, who cannot look upon sin. The Bible says he's angry with the wicked every day. Folks, today turn to Jesus Christ. He is the Savior today. 
He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Praise God. He is Lord today. That's right. He is. Where will you spend eternity, folks? Praise God. Let's see that. Where will you spend eternity? That's what matters today. Forget about your favorite player. They don't even know you exist. Where will you spend eternity? It is heaven or hell. Think about that. He says, he knows every hair of your head is numbered, he said. That God created man. But instead, you know, what? we worship all these other men. We wear jerseys. We wear the names on our back. But we don't even care about God. We don't even acknowledge Him as Lord and Creator and King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. No, we don't want to do that. We're going to worship men. We want to serve men. And the Bible says you're serving idols. Many of us today are serving and worshiping idols. We have an idolatrous nation here. Sports is idols. We don't want to serve God. The end result of that life of serving idolatry is punishment from God. He says, you don't have any gods before me. See the sports, see the material things. It's something that is a god for you today. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The end result of the sin is death. The end result of the sin is destruction. And he says, because that's all they know is sin. They need a new nature that only Christ can give. He says, naturally, there's none that understands. There's none that seeks after God. God isn't even in their thoughts. Will they be set free through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Savior? He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ, because of his atoning death, pacified the wrath of a holy God against sinners. Those who trust in him will not be condemned. But those who forsake the Lord will be consumed. Our God is a consuming fire. God is angry with the wicked every day. You need righteousness. You need to be saved from your sins. Repent and give glory to God. Flee from the wrath to come. Turn from your evil ways today. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Pride of man will be humble. Jesus is one of all. Give glory to the Lord your God today. Repent before you perish. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. Outside of Christ, you're dead in sins. You must be born again. God commanded to repent, to turn to your evil ways and live. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. You need to be saved in the wrath of God. We're in great danger of judgment. Cast down your idols. Turn from your wicked ways. Return to the Lord. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God is commanding all people everywhere to repent. He has appointed a day in which he will judge the world. You need the Lord Jesus Christ to save your soul from the wrath of God. It is appointed for you once to die. But after this is the judgment. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, atonement was made. Because Jesus lived perfectly, Jesus died in the sin of the cross, the Lord Jesus rose again, you're on the path of destruction, the wrath of God abides upon you, come to Christ to be saved. You must be born again, read John. God commands all men everywhere to repent. He commands all men and women everywhere to repent of their sin. So she will bow to Christ. Oh, the glory, oh, they rejoice. In their iniquity, they rejoice in carnal things. The folks in you face Almighty God. The victory in the World Series will mean nothing. Eternity is in the balance. It's heaven or hell. It is heaven or hell. It is heaven or hell. It is either repent or perish. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice at trembling. Either you bow to Christ or be destroyed in the everlasting torment. You continue in sin. He says, how can he continue in sin while well, grace abounds? God forbid. He says, how can you continue in sin while well, grace abounds? He says, God forbid, turn from your iniquities. God does not care if you're a professional baseball player. He does not care who you are. You are accountable to God regardless of who you are. You must be born again or you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Repent of your sin or you will perish. You must be born again. The Bible says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and everyone may receive the things done to his body according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. 
Every person out here today will give an account to God on the day of judgment. Every person will give an account to a holy and righteous God. Turn from your evil ways. You must be born again. Turn from your evil ways. Repent of your sin. Bow to your maker, Jesus Christ. The gods of this nation are idols. You're bowing to idols. You're not serving God. Bow to the King of Kings. Bow to him as Lord. For you will be for your cast into everlasting torment in hell.